Hello, everyone. My name is Will Grayling, and uh, we can put on presentation mode. Um, I'm the CEO of Indigo, and Indigo Technologies actually was founded uh, by MIT professor Ian Hunter, who was a former GM fellow. Um, Indigo is currently uh, my fifth company that I've started since graduating from MIT myself with a couple of master's degrees. And uh, my previous four were all acquired by large publicly traded companies, uh, including the last one uh, that became Samsung Pay. Now, what makes Indigo special is the invention that Professor Hunter had created called the robotic wheels, which enables a whole new class of smoother, roomier vehicles that are also light and affordable, which sounds like an oxymoron, but uh, let's get into it in a little bit more detail. The next slide shows you the problem that the gig workers and cars are getting heavier and heavier to SUVs and trucks. And if you look at this picture, you can kind of wonder what's wrong with this picture. And it's twofold. One is that while the cars have gotten heavier, uh, the payloads have not. And all these people on the left are really only have one person in there. So why can't we make lighter vehicles um, especially as we transition to electric. Next slide. So the reason that we can't make light vehicles um, desirable is because the current vehicle architecture for EVs uh, still uses the traditional conventional vehicle two box architecture. And uh, when you look at these vehicles, they weigh 7,000 pounds, 6,000 pounds, and even my Tesla Model S weighs 4,900 pounds. And when you have big, heavy vehicles like that, it wastes energy and money, and it's not affordable for the gig economy workforce that's driving more for us. But when you want to go light, the axles and the traditional propulsion suspension system make usable cabin space much worse. And to make matters worse, uh, they feel like bouncy golf carts due to the laws of physics in suspension. So here's the where the breakthrough comes in. Next. The breakthrough comes in um, when we can apply the robotic wheel technology to a whole new class of vehicle that is smoother, roomier, and more affordable. And the magic starts with the robotic wheels themselves. So this next slide shows you how we created a hub motor that actually can move up and down without needing to have motors in the, between the wheels, uh, transmission, axles, drive shaft. And what that does is it frees up all of that space between the wheels to give you more cabin space in a smaller package. And when you can shrink the smaller package in a smaller space and have active suspension in each corner to provide a magic carpet ride experience. So that it's the smoothest ride that you have but it's also in a light vehicle that is, uh, that is much smaller. Next, you'll see that uh, we have the comparison between our vehicle and the most popular SUV in America called the Toyota RAV4. You can see that their usable cabin space starts behind the driver, which is much further back from the front of the car. We're already shorter, but we can also have much more usable cabin space below the axle where conventional vehicles have to start above the axle. So what that means is a vehicle that's not only smoother and, and more cabin space, it allows for a 2000 pound vehicle as opposed to a four, five, 6,000 pound vehicle. And what that means is we can have a much smaller battery, a 40 kilowatt hour battery that can go 250 miles a range. And, um, that means much faster to charge, uh, much less expensive in material, less lithium mining required. But also when you look at the ergonomics, we decided to focus in on the gig economy workforce that's delivering for us so that they can have a center driving seat and have two sliding doors on each side for easy ingress and egress, even between two parked cars, so that you don't have to worry about getting hit when you're um, out there in busy streets or, um, snagging uh, bicyclists when you open your door. Next, you see that um, what we have created is a solution that the gig economy workforce can get access to with our partner, my other company, OV Loop, with a super app solution. Super apps are, are familiar in, in uh, Asia, uh, like Grab and WeChat. But in the US, 
what we can do is create a super app that allows them to have access to these vehicles for much less per mile without that heavy down payment. Next, you'll see that um, the vehicles that we're providing and the ways of providing accessibility allows us to provide a higher level of sustainability and a much lower carbon footprint, even compared to uh, conventional uh, electric vehicles. Next. Here you see that um, the relationships that we have with uh, Uber and, and uh, the likes of Amazon and Point Pickup and the gig economy workforce, as well as delivery fleets, they're looking for low cost vehicles like this for not only their drivers who have to be able to afford it themselves, but also total cost of ownership to reduce that for the fleets. So we have relationships with a lot of these companies already. And uh, next, you'll see that what we're asking for right now is that uh, we've raised close to $100 million, about $95 million to date. And we're going to be raising our next round of capital um, with uh, Series C for $100 million, and then moving towards start of production uh, in 2024. So we're also looking for strategic partners. We have many that we have already uh, amassed. And, um, and from a government relationship standpoint, we're currently applying for the Department of Energy ATVM loans, and we're looking for other government initiatives to, um, to start providing these kinds of services in multiple cities and also selling the vehicles to uh, multiple fleets. Next. So as you can see here, our product roadmap allows us to build uh, not only the prototype vehicles, but uh, the pre-production vehicles next year with homologation. And uh, 2024 is when we plan to launch uh, into full production. Next, we'll talk about our, um, our team here. Um, we have uh, brought together some of the, the leading experts, including the former head of innovation at Audi, the former lead designer at Lucid and uh, Porsche uh, to join us with a team of experts that can help us uh, take our propulsion suspension uh, invention into the marketplace. And you also see that next slide, we have uh, board members that um, are from the industry, uh, former head of uh, Zipcar, um, FM Capital, uh, the former head of Uber Money. Next slide, please. You'll see the, um, uh, the board of directors and board of advisors that we have are very, very strong. So let's uh, finally, the last slide, um, just to summarize, we've invented a whole new propulsion suspension system that allow us to create this new class of smoother, roomier, more affordable vehicle so that we can really drive sustainability in urban mobility. I'll open it up for questions right now. I have a very quick question. Uh, are you like going head to head with uh, Re? Right? Um, we don't see ourselves going head to head with Re because uh, Re is providing a platform that uh, is for much heavier vehicles. If you look at their propulsion suspension system, they have these corners that um, uh, really provides a, a platform itself. Ours are robotic wheels that are literally built into the wheels with nothing in between so that we can provide a low flat floor. And our vehicles are designed to be 2000 pounds and re vehicles are much heavier. And re is also not producing the vehicles directly for drives uh, for delivery and uh, ride hill uh, market where we're very, very focused on that market. Uh, Other you questions? Talk, you, you were talking about uh, your, uh, the vehicles being much cheaper. But as we know, for uh, EVs, uh, 50 or 60 percent of the cost is the batteries uh, in which, you know, you, you're not uh, taking part in that uh, uh, game. The way that, yes, good question, the way that we save cheaper? is by lightweighting the vehicle to a 2,000 pound vehicle rather than a four, five, 6,000 pound vehicle. And when you have a large vehicle, you need a much bigger battery to start with. And guess what the most expensive part of the car is? The battery. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a 40 kilowatt hour battery rather than a 100 kilowatt hour battery, or the Rivian has 135 kilowatt hour battery. So by having a smaller 
uh, footprint to start with, and a but still roomy inside, um, a 2,000 pound vehicle allows us to have a much smaller battery, therefore lower cost, less lithium mining, less copper, less aluminum, et cetera. Thank you. Next question. Is the battery something that you're building in house or is that something you're purchasing? We are currently designing our cell to pack. So in other words, designing directly into our chassis, but we're using third party cells and those are not our cells. So uh, partners like Samsung and, and others that uh, are providing the cells. 